Robert Arnott In investing, what is comfortable is rarely profitable. This idea lays the foundation for anyone stepping into the investment world, especially when choosing between two popular investment options. On one side, you have SCHD, which loves giving its investors quarterly money back through dividends from strong, stable companies. On the other side is JEPI, which uses a special strategy involving options to give investors money every month and keeping things smooth even when the market gets bumpy. In this video, we'll look at what makes SCHD and JEPI different, from how they try to make money to how risky they might be. We'll compare them side by side to help you understand which one might be better for your investment journey. In the end, I'll show you a side-by-side -side projection for the long term with a $100,000 one-time investment. And the difference is significant. One pays around $30,000 in monthly dividends while the other over $60,000 every month. Last year was amazing for a group of top-performing stocks we like to call the Magnificent Seven. NVIDIA was the star, with its value shooting up by nearly 250%. Even the least impressive performer of the group, Apple, saw its value increase by more than 54.05%. That's pretty impressive. Now you might be thinking, should I just buy stocks like Microsoft, Tesla, Alphabet, Amazon, and Meta? And it's a valid question. Today we're going to talk about why investing in something called a dividend ETF might also be a smart move. When comparing two popular ETFs, SCHD and JEPI, one stands out more than the other. So why consider an ETF? Well, if you're looking for a safer investment that lets you own a bunch of different stocks or securities all at once, ETFs could be for you. They're usually cheaper than the funds you'd get from a hedge fund or mutual fund, and they're also more tax-friendly. Plus, you can use them to quickly spread out your investments across various industries, countries, or types of assets like bonds or commodities. This is a great way to diversify your portfolio easily. Even though ETFs come with a small yearly fee known as the expense ratio, it's often very low. For example, SCHD has an expense ratio of just 0.06% and JEPI's is 0.35%. To put that in perspective, some other well-known ETFs charge much more. If you don't have the time or desire to pick and manage all these investments yourself, ETFs can be a huge time saver. But not all ETFs are the same. JEPI, for instance, tries to make money by selling something called covered calls on the stocks it owns. This is a common strategy where the seller gets to keep a fee for selling these options. SCHD, on the other hand, goes for a simpler approach, focusing on companies that pay good dividends and aim to follow the Dow Jones U.S. Dividend 100 Index. Both JEPI and SCHD have their benefits, but I have a favorite between the two. In the end, I'll show you how, with a $100,000 investment, one of them has the potential to add an extra $1 million to the portfolio and pay over $60,000 each month in dividends. Now, first, let's see the holdings. When you're choosing between JEPI and SCHD or thinking about getting both, it's really about understanding what you're putting your money into. JEPI is taking care of about $30.6 billion worth of investments, while SCHD is a bit more, with $51.7 billion. The interesting part is that what they invest in is very different from each other. Let's break it down. SCHD likes to keep its eggs in fewer baskets, with its top 10 investments making up 40% of its entire portfolio. JEPI, on the other hand, spreads its investments more thinly, with its top 10 making up just over 16%. What's inside these portfolios? Well, SCHD has a thing for companies that are known for giving money back to their investors like Amazon, AbbVie, and Texas Instruments. Meanwhile, JEPI prefers some of the big names that have been growing strong for a while, like Microsoft, Amazon, and Visa. They also like different types of companies. JEPI is really into technology companies, while SCHD prefers those in the industrial sector. 
When it comes to oil and gas, JEPI has a tiny bit, only 2.65%, but SCHD has a bit more skin in the oil game with 9%. So what's better for you? If you're excited about technology and don't mind a bit of risk when interest rates go up, JEPI could be your pick. But if you're looking for something a bit steadier and less bothered by those interest rate changes, SCHD with its focus on industrial companies might be more up your alley. Remember though, that industries can be hit by changes in the markets and oil prices. So the choice is yours, but you should also take into account the strategies these two ETFs use. These two funds look at making money in their own unique ways. Even though they both aim to give you returns on your investment, how they do it is very different. The JEPI game plan is about making money for investors, especially when the market is tough, like in 2022. JEPI is good for steady money because it doesn't go up and down as much as others like SPY and SCHD. That's because in a bad market, JEPI isn't just sitting around, it's actively managed, meaning that there's a team picking investments that they think will do well, which is not something you see with every fund. Unlike some funds that stick to a set list and don't change, JEPI plays it smarter by adjusting its picks based on what's happening in the market. In fact, they do a lot of trading, about 190% turnover in a year. Some might wonder if all this active management is worth it. The thing is, JEPI uses a special strategy by writing covered calls, a type of option on the big companies in the S&P 500 index. And this is a bit different from just picking stocks. They use something called Equity Linked Notes, ELNs for short, to do this, which isn't something you trade on the stock market. These ELNs and the call options help JEPI make money, but also put a cap on how much they can earn from each investment. Switching to the SCHD game plan. It's all about investing in US companies that pay stable dividends. It follows a specific index that picks out some of the best dividend paying companies that have been reliable for years. To get into SCHD's club, a company must have paid dividends for 10 years straight, be big enough, and be easy to buy and sell. They choose companies based on a few things like how much cash they generate, how efficient they are, their dividend yields, and how their dividends have grown. SCHD doesn't like any one company or sector to take up too much space, so they have limits to keep things balanced. Mostly, SCHD tries to copy the performance of its index, but it can tweak things a bit for tax reasons or to manage cash better. They might not change things up as much as JEPI does, with only 28% of trading happening, but they're not just sitting still either. SCHD wants to match its index as closely as possible, but things like transaction costs and legal stuff can make it a bit off-target sometimes. So, you've got JEPI and SCHD, each with their own way of doing things. JEPI likes to actively pick and choose with a special focus on options, while SCHD sticks closer to an index but still pays attention to dividends and company strength. Both have their ups and downs, but JEPI's approach is something we're leaning towards as the more interesting option. In the end, I'll show you how this different strategy affects John's one-time investment of $100,000, and the difference is significant. One method gives about $30,000 in monthly income, while the other gives more than $60,000 every month. Now that you have the two strategies, you also need to know their inherent risks. Both JEPI and SCHD have their fair share since they invest across many sectors, but there are a few key differences between them. JEPI has a unique way of making money by using something called covered calls. This means they agree to sell a stock at a set price in the future. It's a way to make a steady income, especially when the market isn't doing great. But the downside is that if the stock prices shoot up, JEPI might miss out on some of those extra gains because they're locked into an agreed price. SCHD, on the other hand, doesn't limit how much it can earn from rising stock prices. 
However, this also means it can feel the full impact of market dips more than JEPI does. Plus, since SCHD has a lot of investments in oil and gas, it's more affected by global political changes that can shake those industries. The question is, taking into account both their strategies and risk factors, how good or bad is their historic performance? When we invest, we're all looking for good returns without too many ups and downs. First off, if we look at the returns over three years, SCHD brought back 32.26%, while JEPI got a little less at 29.79%. It might seem like SCHD is the clear winner, but hold on. Last year, JEPI really shined and beat SCHD by about 5% in returns, which is impressive. But there's more to a fund than just how much money it makes. Let's dive deeper and compare them on a few other things that matter to investors. For starters, when it comes to how stable these funds are, meaning how much their values swing up and down, JEPI has had a share price appreciation of 14.54% since inception, averaging around 4.63% each year. Next, we consider the current dividend yield, which stands at 7.61%. However, this yield has fluctuated, with the highest recorded at 12.85% and averaging around 9%. Lastly, we look at dividend growth, which has averaged 12.66% since inception. But since this ETF is relatively on the new side and has been around for three years, we have to use a slightly conservative approach. For calculation, we would be taking average share price appreciation of 3% since it's not designed to give capital gains, an average dividend yield of 6%, and an average dividend growth rate of 7%. The same figure for SCHD looks something like this. Average share price appreciation of 7.95%, current dividend yield of 3.38%, and average dividend growth rate of 7.61%. Now, let's calculate John's potential earnings from a $100,000 initial investment based on these figures. Starting with SCHD. In the first year, John's investment in SCHD is projected to grow to $111,330. After 10 years, it's expected to triple to $307,921. Give it another 10 years, and in 20 years, John's investment will have reached $1,091,894 in valuation, paying $61,354 in annual dividends. This is where it gets better. In 30 years, John's initial investment in SEHD has the potential to reach $4,703,800, paying an annual dividend of $362,479, or roughly $30,207 monthly. Over 30 years, this ETF has the potential to add $4,603,800 to John's initial investment, with $2,383,549 from stock growth and $2,220,251 from reinvested dividends. But is it better than JEPI? Let's find out. John's $100,000 in JEPI after the first year is projected to reach $109,000. After 10 years, it's projected to grow to $264,145. In 20 years, John's initial investment will have increased to $950,166, a less substantial growth compared to SCHD. But that's where the high dividend and solid growth take charge. In 30 years, John's initial investment has the potential to reach $5,307,603, paying an annual dividend of $815,987, which translates to approximately $68,000 per month. Over 30 years, JEPI has the potential to add $5,207,603 to John's initial investment, with $859,197 attributed to stock growth and a significant $4,348,405 from reinvested dividends. 
This means while SCHD might look better over a longer period, JEPI wins for us because of its steadier nature and amazing dividend payments. The dividends are the cherry on the top, letting you reinvest and earn even more over time, which Albert Einstein and Warren Buffett praised as a powerful way to build wealth. ETFs are good, as is Bill Gates' portfolio. Click the video on the screen to watch how Bill Gates' stock could grow to over $10 million from a $10,000 investment.